Football is on at Yard House. Step up your game at Yard House with Monday Night Happy Hour from kickoff to the final play, featuring appetizers starting at $5. Enjoy game day favorites including boneless wings, pizzas, poke nachos, and more. Plus, catch all the action on over 20 flat screen TVs and enjoy the largest selection of draft beer with over 100 beers on tap. This season, make Yard House your home for football. Visit yardhouse.com for details. Dr. Wiley says we will not take over the world unless we are listening to GeekCast Radio Network. <laughs> Maybe you should play something else. Hello and welcome to GCR and Wars. This is episode 17. This is round two of our video game character tournament. I'm, of course, TFG and Mike. Joining me is Steve Megatron. Hello. Hello. And Optimus Solo, a.k.a. Solo Mac. No. Yes. No one but I am here. <laughs> it's never going to die, dude. That's as good as your acronym. With as much crap as you give me, you're, that you're never living Solo Mac down. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, Barney Tron. <laughs> All right, so we are here to reveal the round one winners and also discuss the round one, round two matchups for this tournament. Um, the other hosts that were supposed to join us, they um, they're getting beat by the the losers of round one. They they got eaten by Kirby. They just haven't gotten shot back out yet. Oh, that was Yoshi. Oh, they got tongued and then turned into eggs. So we're still waiting for them to come back to the living. So hopefully they'll be here, some of them, next time we record. So I guess my whole sucking and blowing thing with Kirby actually did come true. Uh, what I was going to originally say was the duck hunt dog ate everybody else. <laughs> I like where we went with it much better. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Jerk. All right, Kev, what do we got? Well, for the last two weeks, we've been uh, discussing round one, which uh, saw 32 classic video game character icons whatever you want to call them go up against each other let's not get caught up in the semantics um so we spent the first week talking about all the nintendo characters then we came back the next week talking about the second half of round one which included a variety of playstation uh sega old school you know etc type uh, characters but we did not reveal any of the results so that will be what we're doing right now as well as getting into the second round matchups as we try to narrow our field. So today we go from 32 to 16, and then we'll discuss basically who we think should be in the Elite Eight. So starting back with the first battle that we talked about two weeks ago, that was Mario and Luigi. Steve, how did the people vote, and who came out the victor between Mario and Luigi? Uh, this one was 28 to 4. Mario slam dunked it. Slam Dunkaroonie for Mario. So a pretty big victory by 24 votes out of the 32. He beat him by 24. So Mario moves on, and Mario was set to face the winner of Yoshi and Toad. Steve, how did Yoshi and Toad fare against each other? Uh, Yoshi won 20 to 9. So an even bigger victory, 20 to 9 by Yoshi. Which means that for our first round two matchup today, we have Mario going against Yoshi. Mike, what do you think? I I don't know because it's been a while. Like I know there have been multiple versions of Smash Brothers in the last ten years, but honestly, the last version I played was on the N sixty four, and it just having Mario go against Yoshi. It's a little bit strange to me because they usually were are working together now if it i mean obviously we know popular vote was not going to get toad in here but i kind of would have liked to see mario versus toad so mario can give the beat down on that annoying little mushroom um as far as mario versus yoshi i don't know man it's i'm not even sure which one's the more popular character i mean you think mario because he's been around longer etc but they're both pretty popular Mm -hmm. so i don't know that we can necessarily predict this one just based on saying oh the more popular character is going to win 
Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things to look at. I mean, obviously Mario has, a, you know, we, we hashed out the powers that he has in round one. You know, he has the fireballs. He can turn into the raccoon, Tanuki, you know, et cetera, et cetera, frog suit, whatever. Um, but you kind of got to look, too, at uh, the games that they were together, mm-hmm. in which case Yoshi was usually pretty reliant on Mario being on his back mm-hmm. and controlling him and navigating him, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But we did talk about in round one that Yoshi, it's hard, it's hard to beat Yoshi because, um, you know, if you hit him, he just runs around until somebody else jumps on his back. Um, and he yeah. can obviously stick his tongue out, eat you, and poop you out as an egg. Yeah. The only time <laughs> the only time Yoshi can die, at least in Super Mario World, I don't know about Yoshi's Island Super Mario World 2. That, that game's too weird for me. Um, but in the original Super Mario World game, the only time Yoshi can die is if you're on a level that has a um, uh, a side-scrolling screen where the screen is moving with you so you can't go back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he can only die there or if you, you know, jump off his back and, you know, have him land in a pit. So those are the only two ways Yoshi That's what I was going to say. I was going to yeah. say Mario's best chance might be to jump on Yoshi's back because mm-hmm. Yoshi's not going to be, be able to do anything about that. Mario can then direct him towards <laughs> a cliff and then jump off at the last second, <laughs> sending Yoshi to his death. Um, but he has to do all that before Yoshi can eat him. Yeah. Steve, what do you think? How does this one play out? I think Mario is going to get uh, his flight power and fly over him as he gets hit uh, by a mushroom. No, uh, I think I think Yoshi's going to lose because of two reasons. Not only does Mario have all of his different uh, adaptability blocks that uh, he obtains throughout the levels, uh, we also have the fact that, well. Um, Yoshi may be impenetrable for the most part, um, unless he gets bumped into, Mm -hmm. and then he runs off a cliff by himself, because there's no pilot. Um, And then the fact that Mario is a fan favorite, so he's going to destroy Yoshi just for that reason alone, which is an unfortunate reason. Um, But I think it's also because you have human versus dino, and human has smarter. Yeah. I mean, Yoshi definitely does have that lemming characteristic, so... Uh, you would think Mario would be able to outsmart him in a way and get him to basically defeat himself. Um, if I was going for which character I liked better, I would probably pick Yoshi. Um, although we did have one commenter, uh, you know, in the post for last uh, round mentioned that they could or they should team up, form an alliance, and try to run the table on the rest of the tournament together. <laughs> that would be uh, hilarious, but it would never happen. So that would be interesting. So my my... My heart wants Yoshi to win, but I really think not not just playing the fan favorite or the popular character, but I think Mario should be able to somehow outsmart him, whether he uses his different powers, whether he flies above, whether he jumps on his back and leads him to his own death, or you know whether he just bumps into him and Yoshi runs off on his own. I mean, I think the lemming characteristic comes into play. Yoshi could beat anybody in this tournament if he had the right opportunity, but... I think he still has a bunch of weaknesses, and I think Mario takes advantage of that. Mike? I think that it's one of those things where you just don't know how people are going to vote, and you don't know if they've actually listened to our opinions here on the podcast. Um, But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how far Yoshi makes it if he beats Mario here. Because just, and I'm not doing any predictions here, I'm just stating a fact. Looking at the entire cast of 32 characters I don't know how any of these other characters are going to fight Yoshi I just don't know well, I think there'd definitely be, there would be some intriguing matchups I mean I think uh, yeah. you know Yoshi, Donkey Kong Yoshi, Kirby, some of those would be uh, interesting matchups where they have some of the same strengths but I honestly uh, you know, a lot of people had the comments and they see certain people running away with this one way or the other and I'm not saying that you can't see that from a, from a few people but I think it'd be a, a mistake to say that any of these 32 characters does not have a weakness because they all have a weakness and they all can be beaten. I think it just depends on who matches up with who. And this one, Mario is so used to controlling Yoshi and being the leader of that group that, uh, I mean, he could just play fetch with Yoshi, throw a freaking <laughs> branch <laughs> off a cliff, and Yoshi would probably go chase it. He would go. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. I'm going with Mario on this one, even though I would rather have Yoshi win. 
Yeah, I gotta go with Mario too. All right, so we're unanimous on that. We'll see how you guys, the listeners, vote on that one. Um, in the next section of that bracket, we had uh, in the first round Princess Peach facing off against Zelda. Steve, how did that one work out? Well, <laughs> Zelda crushed Peach, Pretty which much. sounds hilarious. She crushed a peach. Uh, 20 to 4. So another landslide for Zelda. 20 to 4. Only four people voting for Peach. Obviously, that matches the lowest so far with only four people voting for Luigi in that first battle. And uh, the winner there, Zelda, would go on to face, and this is an interesting matchup possibly, Zelda would go on to face the winner between Little Mac from Punch-Out or Link, also from the Zelda franchise. So who is Zelda facing, Link or Little Mac? Uh, Surprisingly, despite the fact that we tried to build a good case for this character, uh, Little Mac got stomped uh, by Link 21 to 3. And obviously, that's not necessarily surprising. A lot of times it does come to who's the more popular, and obviously there's a landslide of uh, Zelda fans out there and Link fans. I think that would be closer than that. I don't think 21 to 3 quite does that justice. Lil Mac now uh, holds the reign for the fewest votes with three here so far. Um, So that would set up a matchup between Zelda and Link, Mike. This has got domestic abuse written all over it. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm so used to them being in a relationship or dating or whatever through the cartoon series or any of the games. And it's like, it's just so weird (laughs) to have the two of them fighting against each other. I almost wish, even though I didn't vote for him, I almost wish Little Mac had won. (laughs) That would be be more brutal because then we'd have an actual boxer beating the crap out of Zelda um, if, if he was successful. Oh, crap. Is this is this a case? Could you make the case that uh, that Zelda and Link come head to head, you know, facing off against each other, and uh, we see like what Kevin Nash did back in the NWO days, where Link just lays his sword down and takes one for the team? Potentially, yeah. You would think so, but I would beg to differ. <laughs> I mean, I hope he wouldn't do that, but I could see the chivalry coming out in him, just being like Zelda, you deserve to go forward. I can't hit you. See, see, here's the thing, okay? Yeah, sure, Link has been in a n- numerous amounts of the Zelda games. Obviously, he started the original Zelda game, but I keep, and I know I shouldn't do this, but I keep going back to the animated series from the 90s, and all I can think of is Link will let Zelda beat him if she'll just give him a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> just give me a kiss. I mean, what ways does Zelda have to combat against Link other than trying to just use her mental prowess to, you know, convince Link or to trick Link through flirtation? I, I mean, I don't. Link has a lot of weapons. Yeah, he's got a shield. So he's got swords, boomerangs. He's got lots of different things that he can use. He's a, a experienced fighter. Zelda is experienced as at getting captured. No, 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 no. Zelda is not... Okay, yeah, that's the premise of the game. <laughs> Zelda is no peach. Zelda isn't, you know, this is your princess in, you know, in another castle. No, no, no. Zelda is a fighter. Even though in the game she's not, obviously, she's the one you have to save, but she really can be a fighter, and she does use magic. She's used the boomerangs before. Um, but I'm not sure how this one's going to play out. I just... I'm not sure. And again, because Link is so chivalrous, I don't think he'll fight her. Obviously, you know, our tournament here in the voting will, you know, determine that. But I'm just thinking of, you know, if I saw this, if I saw the two of them out in my front lawn right now, I think you're right. I think Link would, you know, basically kneel on his sword pretty much. Steve, you disagree? Uh, I think I think uh, in this scenario, I think Link's going to take it. I think he'll he'll knock her out mid transformation. <laughs> um, you know, could just, be like we could, we, there could be like a dark link, like a like some type of thing has come over him and he's no longer chivalrous, and then he's just badass. Yeah, he'll become Toon Link. Um, oh, God. <laughs> um, it's a different version. That's his little kid version. It doesn't play fair. Um, <laughs> so it, it knocks her out while she's in mid transformation to Sheik with the shield or the boomerang. Maybe a combination of both. So it's just a (laughs) like that, except, uh, you know, she gets knocked out. Yeah. I I think I would, you know, if, if they are actually going to fight, I would be siding with link. 
Um, but I agree that there is that one case scenario, Mike, where someone was actually playing this out to how we kind of want them to in an actual battlefield scenario or type of thing. That link, there is that chance that he doesn't fight her. Mm-hmm. So that would be the way. That would be the best argument for Zelda. I think would be for Link to almost lay down his arms. But uh, otherwise, I, I think Link takes this one. I do think that out of all of the round two matchups we're going to talk about tonight, that this is going to be the most cl- the, the the closest one or the most interesting one to see how many people voted for which character, because you know, no offense to any of the other characters. These are two people that eventually fall in love with each other at some point or another in some part of the Zelda universe, you know. So it this is going to be for me. This is going to be the the results that I'm most looking forward to finding out what, you know, who voted for who um and how the match came out because I just don't know. I I almost don't want to cast a vote for either one of them because hmm. it just it's just so wrong. <laughs> I think the thing I'd be most interested in would be uh, to see what scenarios people have. And maybe someone's thinking of another way that Zelda wins this, another scenario or something like that. So I'd love people to go to the website uh, and find the episode post and go ahead and comment on, on how the, what scenarios are you guys picturing? What is going through your mind as you decide who you're voting for in this matchup particularly? And all the matchups, of course. Um, so that would be the next section on this bracket. Moving down a little bit further on the bracket, we had our fifth battle which saw Mega Man fight against Beautiful Joe. Um, how did the voting go between Mega Man and Beautiful Joe, Steve? Not so hot for Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> He's not so beautiful. No, nope. he kind of ugly. Um, this one got knocked out of the park uh, again because Mega Man stole his powers and made him ugly uh, with 21 to 3. Same same uh, numbers as Link and Lil Mac. I don't know if I would think it would be that much of a blowout. Am I surprised that Mega Man won? Absolutely not. Did I vote for Mega Man? Absolutely. Uh, 21 to 3, maybe somewhat surprising, but I guess when it comes down to it, you got to vote for who you think is going to win, and I guess 9 times out of 10, that's going to be Mega Man. So that would bring Mega Man to face off against the winner between the sixth battle in round one, which was Donkey Kong and Fox McCloud. How did that fight go? Um... Donkey Kong kicks some ass. <laughs> I, I'm just dumbstruck. It is the closest. Hey, he 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 did literally <laughs> kick some ass. What was the count? Rocket Raccoon. I mean, Fox McCloud <laughs> did not win. Um, no, was... It was 15 to 10. Oh so my only God. by five votes. This is the closest we've had so far. 15 to 10. So it's an actual close one. This is one of the ones we debated the most on uh, that episode. So maybe not a surprise that it's that close. So Donkey Kong comes away with a five point win, which then pits Donkey Kong against Mega Man. Uh, Steve, Mega Man and Donkey Kong. I mean, Donkey Kong has the same thing that worked for him against Fox McCloud could work against Mega Man. He has the brute strength, the power, the ability to just throw stuff at you, shoot out of barrels, ride on rhinos or dolphins or whatever. But then, of course, Mega Man has a, a library of weapons to use to shoot at you, and he's mastered the art of uh, clung, clinging on to a uh, ladders and balancing on tight spaces. So how do you see this well, one go? Mario did it better. Um, <laughs> uh, Mega Man really couldn't hold on to a whole lot until he became Mega Man X anyway, but um, in this instance, I'm still going to have to go Mega Man, only because not not anything against Donkey Kong, uh, because I, I do enjoy the games as well, and I, I do enjoy Mega Man, but Mega Man has the ability to steal powers from people. But Donkey Kong has no powers. Donkey Kong has no powers, but he just has crazy, you know, brute force. I think it depends on this one where we find our combatants at the beginning of this matchup. If if Donkey Kong is at a ground level spot and Mega Man is on any type of platform or ladder, I think Donkey Kong can easily throw a barrel at him, shoot out of a barrel at him, or somehow knock him off and have the advantage. But if that's not the case, then I don't know what kind of defense Donkey Kong has from a distance when Mega Man's shooting whatever he is going to be shooting at him. Mm. I mean, let's just assume that he has his regular X Buster, and then he has his, you know, the, the say that maybe he absorbs something from Beautiful Joe, like maybe he can draw, you know, a hole in the ground and Donkey Kong just falls through when he's stampeding forward, or you know, even he takes if he the just has the blaster. Yeah, I mean, he could just knock him right out. Yeah, Donkey Kong's got to get this fight to close range before he's done, 
and Mega Man just has to connect with enough hits before Donkey Kong gets to him. And M- Mega Man is also acrobatic. Right. So he could just, you know, do a quick touch flip and go right over him and then blast him from behind. Now there are, I would think there's a lot of Donkey Kong fans out there, but there's a lot of Mega Man fans out there too. So this is another one where popularity, I don't know how much it has to play in this one, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Mike, do you see any scenario that uh, Donkey Kong can can defeat Mega Man from a distance or does he have to close it and make this like a hand-to-hand combat thing? He has to get in close. At, at a distance, Mega Man is going to just destroy him instantly. The funny thing is, I mentioned a minute ago that Donkey Kong has no powers, and then Steve mentioned the brute force thing, and the first thing I think of is, oh, Donkey Kong is Batman and Superman in the same character. (laughs) Only you would make that reference. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I I think Mega Man's going to take it to Donkey Kong. Uh, Yeah, I think... I I mean, if you you really want to come down to intelligence... Over the characters, all Mega Man's got to do is toss him a a, a a a bunch of bananas, and you know. I mean, it does so in some ways. It does parallel the Mario Yoshi fight, not yeah. completely. I mean, Yoshi and Donkey Kong are completely different characters in, in a lot of ways, but it's it's a similar situation where you have maybe a, a smarter, more agile person um, going against somebody who has to rely on on kind of just dumb luck and and, and brute force type thing. So yeah. I'd be interested to see if those two fights go the same way, and I'd be surprised if we have like a Yoshi win and then Mega Man win, or Mario win and then Donkey Kong win, because that would be kind of people voting different ways there. Um, you would think it would either be Mario and Mega Man or Yoshi and Donkey Kong. Um, but we'll have to wait and see how people vote. And then that takes us to um, what our seventh battle was in round one, second to last one on that side, which was Bomberman versus uh, Conker. And, uh, Steve, how did that one play out? Uh, again, it was kind of almost a half and half, literally. Uh, Bomberman managed to bomb Conquer. Fed him a fake squirrel. It was a bomb. <laughs> 16 to 8. Yeah, so, you know, another close one. Only eight votes, uh, separated them, basically. I think people are might be sleeping on Bomberman. I mean, the guy's got bombs. Um, and <laughs> he can be sneaky with them, and he's got a lot of them. So, I, I think, uh, don't underestimate Bomberman. Um... That would mean that Bomberman would get to go against the winner of Pikachu and Kirby. And obviously there's been a lot of talk about Kirby. Let's see how he actually did it when it came to voting for first round, Steve. He ate that damn mouse. <laughs> Kirby over Pikachu by what count? 13 to 9. Only four votes separating them. That is the closest of our battles, actually. That, is that because of the number of Pokemon fans out there? Possibly. I don't know. It, it could be, and I think that, that because po- Pikachu is the most well-known mm-hmm. out of the Pokemon. Because it seemed I like a lot of people. Seemed... Yeah, it seemed like a lot of people were talking about Kirby and how he's the odds-on favorite, and he could destroy the whole tournament. And he's coming away with the closest, the slimmest margin of victory here in the round one so far. But uh, I guess that either way, he still wins, and that puts Kirby against Bomberman. And I don't care. Um, what everybody has to say about Kirby and that he can just uh, inhale everybody and take their powers and whatnot. He can't actually take the... Let's correct one thing. He doesn't just get to take everybody's power and keep them unlimited. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not his. That's not how it works. He doesn't just get to take someone's power, keep it unlimited, and just you know go through everything and eat everybody. And even if he does eat Bomberman, then what's saying that Bomberman can't go uh, kamikaze on him and blow both of them up? That's very true. He could just blow himself up in Kirby, and they'd both just die. I mean... What now? Or at least he could get Kirby... I mean, if Kirby eats everything, I think it would be pretty easy for Bomberman to convince Kirby to eat some bombs. Yeah. I I know Bomberman's not the more popular character, and I know this will probably be a landslide vote for Kirby, but I think Bomberman has maybe the best... one of the best shots in this tournament of taking Kirby out. Kirby eats things. Bomberman has bombs. Like, eat a bomb, blow up, pink Kirbiness everywhere. <laughs> Mike, how do you see this one going? That sounds so wrong. <laughs> it's That's like so when the Stay right. Puft Marshmallow blew up. Oh my god, that sounds so wrong. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I know a lot of people are going to vote for Kirby. What do you, how do you see it playing out, Mike? Um, Kirby versus Bomberman... Kirby can eat anything. 
even bombs, and he's not going to be affected. So I think Kirby's going to take it. You can't blow up? I don't think so. It's been a long time since I've played a Kirby game, so I just maybe I'm just biased because I want Kirby to lose somewhere in this. Because <laughs> I disagree with I, the whole I just can eat everything and hail everybody's power and nobody can beat me. I'm like the biggest badass in the world, but that's just not the case. It's Kirby. He's like a Jello version of Mega Man. <laughs> Steve, how do you see this one going? Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your scenario. Hmm. I see this going in favor of, of Kirby, only for the fact that Bomberman, yes, he may be a bomb, but Kirby could not only absorb him, but Kirby can fly. Kirby can, um, well, in his weird sort of air-sucking way. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dad would have field day with that one. Um, he has his sword that he can unleash in the, you know, when he's coming down. Um he can turn into a ton of bricks and land on top of them. So even if Bomberman exploded, he would be safe. I, I saw uh, someone. Someone did like uh, certain battles, not really like a like a tournament like this, but they were just doing an individual battle on online somewhere, and they had uh, Kirby going against uh, Boo from Dragon Ball oh, Z nice. or whatever. I, I, yep. I don't I don't remember who he had winning, but it, it seemed like it was a pretty epic fight because they both can just keep getting bigger. It seems like. Um. So then that's how we have the one side of the bracket. That's it for that side. So we have Mario against Yoshi, Zelda against Link, Mega Man against Donkey Kong, and Bomberman against Kirby. And I think it just gets very interesting from here on out. There's, uh, there might be some blowouts, but I don't think they're obvious blowouts. Well, let me just say, too, that the funniest thing of all is I, I called all but one of that side. <laughs> Which was the one you didn't call? Donkey Kong against Fox. I was hoping Fox would take it just because even in, in when I play the game, Fox royally kicks Donkey Kong's ass when I have the computer playing. <laughs> that makes sense. All right, so that means we can move over to the right side of the bracket here. And uh, battle number nine, the first one on the right side, we had Sly Cooper going against Crash Bandicoot. Now, we had a kind of a split panel when we did this record last week. We had people, uh, so at least one person... Uh, voting on each side of this. Uh, Steve, how did it play out? How did Sly and Crash do? Well, Sly and Crash played out. Sly was pretty slick. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. The uh, nine to four. So another very close one. Um, another five-point uh, spread here, so not, not a huge margin, but uh, Sly prevails, as I think uh, most of us predicted. I'm sorry, Mike. Shut up. <laughs> so that means Sly gets uh, the luck of going against the winner between Rayman and Spyro. How did Spyro and Rayman end up? Well, <laughs> um, this is the start of a massive downfall. <laughs> uh, Spyro burned his ass with 11 to 2. Dragon power. Everybody likes the dragons. I guess my, my argument failed to try to support Rayman there, even though I'm not really, I don't have anything vested in Rayman. I'm a <laughs> huge fan. I just thought he had a chance, but Spyro, I guess, prevails, which means it's Spyro against Sly Cooper. Is it just people voting dragons the rest of the way, or is Sly not just Sly enough to go against Crash Bandicoot, but also Sly enough to slay the dragon? Mike, how do we go? I gotta go Spyro again. How did I know you were gonna say that? He's Sly Cooper might be cunning and stealthy and whatever else, but Spyro can just come right at you with the fire, and he can basically fly around your ass, and he can fly circles everywhere. It's just Spyro, hands down. Have Again, you ever battled a raccoon? No. Is that what Sly is? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Those things are vicious. They might be vicious, but again, I think this one, this one specifically falls into what we fell into with Donkey Kong and Mega Man. I don't think so. I think it does, because it, unless Sly can get in there up close, all Spyro's got to do is fly up above him and just flame on. There is something to be said, though, about the smarter, more intelligent, more cunning opponent, which obviously would be Sly in this. I don't know. I, I'd like to tend to, to vote with the smarter guy than just the dumb luck. But, Steve, what were you saying? Uh, well, I was going to say that I think, you know, yeah, Spyro has the flight and he has the fire, but Spyro also 
I, I could see er, losing to to Sly only for the fact that Sly's cunning. He seems like he's the kind of character that would wait for the opportune moment, whereas Spyro is more cocky and arrogant and seems more younger, whereas as Sly is seems like an older, more seasoned, and, and uh, would kind of wait his turn to attack and catch him at his at, when his guard's down. Uh, I, I just see him outsmarting him. Yeah, I'm kind of siding with you. I mean, I'm not saying that it's going to be a landslide. I think this would be a very clear. Honestly, out of all the matchups we've talked about so far, this is the one I absolutely don't know how it's going to play out. Um, I'm not saying I know how all the other ones are, but I I have a feeling. I could, you know, I could kind of guess each one to see. I I don't know who's going to win this matchup. I don't know who's going to get the most votes. I don't know if they were actually, you know, I don't even think it matters if you're voting on popularity and who's just the most known character or if you're voting on, you know, if these two are actually fighting. Either way, I don't know if there's a a clear-cut winner. I am going to be, out of all the matchups in this round, this is probably the one I'm going to be the most interested in seeing how it plays out. I just don't, I I don't see either one of them having a a clear-cut advantage, but I'm kind of with Steve here. I think the the smarter one, the more cunning one, and the more... uh, I don't know. Just he—he he looks more like a fighter, even though he's going against a dragon that can breathe fire. I don't know. <laughs> See that, but that's the thing, though. What? What? Okay. What? You'll have to remind me because I don't remember past yesterday. What? Um, what weapons does Sly have to fight with? He's got that big sickle thing, that like curved hook thing. Scythe. Yeah. Okay. And and he's got his brain. He can fight with his. So brain. he could just cut off Spyro's wings. And just and he be could done just like it. scoop him out of the air, just like hook him and then like toss him somewhere. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying he has the better arsenal. I think right. Spyro has the better weapons, you know, most likely. But man, sometimes, somebody, sometimes you can just get outsmarted and get tricked. And his name's Sly. I think the. <laughs> I I think the only thing that like the only time Spyro would really get fooled by Sly in general is if he's charging at him and Sly moves out of the way. Because I know from playing. The Spyro games. Once you get charging, it's sometimes it is hard to stop. But I think if it's in a standstill fight, even if Spyro's flying around, the fire's going to scorch that raccoon. I mean, could be. Everybody's going to have raccoon for dinner next week. Well, we'll have to see what the listeners think. You know, post some scenarios. Tell us how. Try to convince people to vote one way or the other, and give us the best scenario. Because I, I don't know what it is on this one. I'm, I would, I'm voting for Sly on this, but I can see Mike's point with Spyro. I can see it going either way. Um, moving on down the bracket on that side, we had our eleventh battle, which saw Ratchet and Clank go against Toe Jam. <laughs> And Earl. Steve. This is well before Steve goes. This is where we had a lot of stuff in the comments about. I don't even understand why some of these characters are here. They're not iconic characters. If you don't appreciate Toe Jam and Earl being involved, then you have no soul. <laughs> uh, the opinions of Optimus Soul do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Geekcast Radio Network. Um, they should. <laughs> Steve, how did this one go between Ratchet and Clank and Toe Jam and Earl? Well. Surprisingly, Toe Jam and Earl got some votes. <laughs> they got two. <laughs> we we said that there's though there's that one person out there. Apparently, there's two of them. <laughs> there's that one uh, person that just wants to throw an axe in there. Yep, they lost two to twelve. So Ratchet and Clank commanding win, even though there's two jokers that did vote for Toe Jam and Earl, which means Ratchet and Clank gets to go against the winner of the matchup between Banjo Kazooie. And Jack and Daxter. How did that one play out, Steve? Do we even have to answer this one? <laughs> Want to take a guess? Our first shutout. Yes. <laughs> 13 to 0. <laughs> Jack and Daxter. When I saw that shutout, I assumed that it was Toe Jam and Earl, but then I forgot that it was Banjo and Kazooie that were facing off against Jack and Daxter. So, <laughs> uh, no love for Banjo and Kazooie. So, that means we have probably one of the best matchups, I think, in this round. Um, as far as just coolness that they ended up going against each other, we have Ratchet and Clank going against Jack and Daxter, Mike. This is one of the reasons, and I understand why you made the bracket the way you did, but this is one of the reasons why I would want one of these two teams on the other side of the bracket so they can go against each other in the finale or in the 
in the semifinals or something like that because these two teams are just amazing. They just but, it, but it's it's more fun having having yeah. Nintendo against Sony to Sega. Yeah, I know, but I'm I'm just saying that that it would have been cool to see these four peop th- these four characters in the see, in the finals. The other thing you got to think about when you're doing that is that that could be a dream matchup to see those two going against each other. But by putting them each on opposite sides of the bracket, you would risk them never going against each other. And instead, we have here in, in the second round a matchup between Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Dexter. So we at least get to talk about it. Uh, Steve, who do you think has the upper hand on this one? They both had commanding wins in round one. I'm. <sighs> I, I like both designs of both characters. I, I like both concepts of them and, and what they do. Um, I'm going to go Ratchet and Clank. And no, Mike, not because David K. voices Clank. Uh, Liar! <laughs> it's because I like robots more in general. And I think that having the robot companion would be more of a uh, an up, uplift to... Uh, Ratchet than having a freaking weasel. <laughs> um, heart... Even though he's sarcastic and he he could probably kick ass too, I think that you know you're uh, yes you have the more hardened warriors and then you have the more kind of you know techno warriors above that that are kind of more raw. But I think that I still think that they would manage to come out ahead using technology over brute force. This this is one where I'm, again, torn between my heart and my head here because my heart wants to vote for Jack and Daxter, but my head's telling me I should probably vote for Ratchet and Clank. I'm actually going to hold off on voting on this one. Um, you know, voting's open for, you know, a, a while now uh, once this airs, and uh, I'm going to wait and see if someone can convince me one way or the other on this one. Um, some of them I'm going to vote right away, but on this one I'm going to hold off and see if someone can, in the comments on the website can convince me to go one way or the other way, because I kind of want to vote for Jack and Daxter, but I need to hear a good argument for that. Otherwise, my default vote will be for Ratchet and Clank. Mike, what do you think? I've only played one of their each of their games um, since they've been out, and I don't remember. Steve, is Ratchet and Clank are they like is one more serious than the other, and one is a goof off, or are they both serious characters? Or it's kind of they're very even. As far as personalities, like as as far as I can tell, like mm-hmm. Ratchet and Clank are. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of sarcasm going through between the two of them, but it's. I get the feeling that they've almost not been at it as long as Jack and Daxter. Because I remember playing the Jack and Daxter games, and Jack is really, really serious, and Daxter is this. Well, I mean, kind of. It, it's it's tone. basically the same thing. I mean, their their sidekicks are their their sarcastic relief. Right, but. Clank is more like upper crust sarcastic. Yeah, like he he's more like um, Daxter's lowbrow. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Daxter is very lowbrow. Daxter is someone that would if if Clank had pants, Daxter would de pants him. Well, um, Daxter would be like, "Those are your testicles, aren't they?" <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just one of those things where. This is is one of the reasons why I like this battle so much is because you have four characters that are very similar as far as a little bit in their personalities. And I'm just wondering if if Daxter's scheming will outwit Clank's um, logical approach. Yeah, that's a good question. Because I mean, sneaky people can get a few up on over 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 intelligent people. Yeah, if you, and if you're sly, you can you can get oh, one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Shut the <laughs> hell up! Dragon fire, damn it! Dragon fire! Dragon fire nope. or dragon balls? I'm sorry. No dragon fire. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, moving on down the bracket on that side here, we get to our thirteenth battle, which saw Earthworm Jim face off against Bubsy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how did this one go, Steve? Well, come on, a cat's got nine lives. I, I think Earthworm Jim, you know. Not only pantsed and de lived him, but I, th- I think that he, he, you know, he left him with one life to live. Only in the world of video games does a worm beat a cat. Um, but Earthworm Jim takes it to Bubsy. What was the final count in that one? Twelve to one. Twelve to one. More people voted for Tojim and Earl than for Bubsy. 
Um, and then that will put Earthworm Jim against the winner of Gex and Sonic. Steve, it's how the, much does Sonic it's the Geico Gecko. <laughs> Sonic ran circles around this one. Very 13 similar. to 1. Yeah, so we had a 12 to 1 and a 13 to 1. So now we have Earthworm Jim against Sonic the Hedgehog. I know that Sonic will blow people, blow, you know, blow this one out of the water because he's the more popular character. He has a huge following. He's uh, super fast, etc. Um, are we selling Earthworm Jim short, though? I mean, he's uh, he's got the gun. He's got the firepower. Mike, uh, how do you see this one going? Earthworm Jim is a, is sneaky uh, in in his attacks and stuff like that, and but it's Sonic. I mean, <laughs> you know, and Sonic should definitely be faster than the, uh, the Earthworm. Well, yeah, it's not like he's just going to suit or no suit. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Earthworm is going to have to hit a couple different shots in a row to make sure Sonic's rings go out and then hit him again and again. Um, and I don't know if Sonic's uh, if he's going to be able to do that with Sonic speed. Steve, how do you th- see Sonic versus Earthworm Jim playing out? I see Sonic running circles around him, turning into his spike. You know, the 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 super fast cutting hedgehog piece that he, he he turns into, where he can just plow through stuff. I see him cutting right through the suit. Yeah, that would leave Earthworm Jim in a world of trouble, but. Uh, We've already seen the earthworm take out a cat, so can the earthworm take out a hedgehog? That He'd have to be question. faster than the hedgehog. That's true. Um, and then moving on down, we have our final two matchups. Uh, battle 15 saw Pac-Man go against Frogger in our battle of the classic characters here. Um, so Pac-Man against Frogger. How'd that play out, Steve? Did Frogger trick Pac-Man into walking in front of a semi? No, he got hosed. He got, he got ran over by that truck. <coughs> 14 times over. Our second shutout of the uh, first round here, Pac-Man 14 to nothing over Frogger. So apparently, uh, I mean, maybe it shouldn't be a a surprise there because Frogger half the time doesn't need anybody battling him. He just kills himself. So Pac-Man victorious, which means he gets to face off against the winner between Qbert and Dig Dug. Now, this is one where Qbert is probably... I mean, a lot of people could make the argument that Qbert was a more popular character. We made the argument that Dig Dug would probably take this one. Were we right or wrong, Steve? Oh, yeah, he took it 13 to 2. So Dig Dug over Qbert, 13 to 2, which sets up a matchup between Pac-Man and Dig Dug. Mike? I wish Neil was here for this. Because we really would need Neil on this to argue this one. I honestly don't know. I mean, Dig Dug could put that thing in there, blow him up, uh, inflate him, or chuck his little thing at him. Um, mm-hmm. Pac-Man would have to eat him. I guess that's Pac-Man's only offense would be to eat Dig Dug. Um, Dig Dug is not super fast, so mm-hmm. that might play into uh, Pac-Man's favor. Steve, how do you see this one playing out? I see Pac-Man going, ow, 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 <laughs> on top of Dig Dug. Uh using his 3D animation against his 2D animation. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I, I, I see I see Pac-Man chomping his way to the top. Steve? Or, I mean, Mike, you agree or disagree? I don't know. I See, this is one of the things where... Dig Dug already took out Qbert. Could he take out another classic favorite and take out Pac-Man? See, that's the thing. I'm not sure. Because... Is Dig Dug going to win this whole thing? Oh no! Oh hell no! <laughs> oh hell no! Don't even go there. <laughs> oh my! Um, so on this side of the bracket, just to recap, we have Sly going against Spyro, we have Ratchet and Clank going against Jack and Daxter, we have Earthworm Jim going against Sonic the Hedgehog, and we have Pac-Man going against Dig Dug. So those are all your round two matchups going back uh, from what we said before with all the Nintendo side and this side. Um, seeing what you have, the one that I'm most intrigued to see how people vote would be the Sly and Spyro matchup. I really don't know how that's going to go. I'm also interested interested to see what kind of arguments or scenarios people can give us between Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter. Um, Mike, what are you looking forward to most? In that, or what's the most lopsided uh, one we're going to have here? Who's going to have the uh, the biggest margin of victory in round two? I'm not sure. I think the two that are going to come the closest are Zelda and Link and the two double teams, Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter. Those are going to be the two closest matchups. As far as runaways, 
I think Sonic I, versus Earthworm Jim might be the biggest runaway. That might be, yeah. Or I Bomberman Kirby and Kirby. Kirby and Bomberman. Yeah. yeah. I can see that the, going that way, too. Yeah, but the rest are the, all going to be too close to call. Well, and this is when it starts to get interesting, too. Every time we move to the next round, it becomes more hard to tell and a little bit more interesting to see how people vote and how things are going to actually shake up to see what kind of matchups we would get um, in in the next round, in the quarterfinals. Um, I don't know. Steve, how do you see this whole thing? And now that we know all the winners of, of round one and we know the matchups of round two, how are you sitting? What do you think about the, the tournament so far? I... I think it's going to get a lot more interesting now. I think that a lot of the the um, kind of name call, you know name calling to the, the the tournament and kind of getting mad at some of the the scenarios are are going to be kind of over. I think because a lot of the the shutouts have happened, a lot of the um, the ones that we didn't think were going to you know make it to the next round, maybe. Um, but I, I think that now they're they're going to start getting more. Um, more specialized in their their attacks against each other and it's going to get more diverse as it gets closer to the the finale i think also it's going to be interesting because now is when we're going to get to see are people just going to strictly vote for the more popular character or are they going to vote for scenarios and who would actually have the upper hand in in a one-on-one battle because you know it's obvious that mario is one of the most popular characters of all time that doesn't mean that mario couldn't get beat by a certain select characters throughout this tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. Same with everybody else that's been put out there as a favorite, whether it be Kirby, whether it be Ratchet and Clank, whether it be whoever. Um, there's got to be people within this tournament that would have the upper hand, but are people just going to vote straight favorites and straight popularity? Or is it going to come down to, well, that person had the wrong matchup, so even though they should on on paper win this whole thing, they ran up against the wrong person, and they're going to be eliminated in this round or in the next round or whatever, Mike. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really going to be interesting. Um... Because uh, it's gonna as we consistently whittle these rounds down to the finale, it it's gonna be interesting to see who makes it, who doesn't. I think people are gonna get a lot more upset as we go through to see which characters do and don't make it. Yeah, as people see their favorites go to the wayside, that there definitely will be some backlash. But uh, that's fine as long as we're getting feedback. Um, that's what makes us fun: the discussion, the comments, the debates, the scenarios that people post. Um, and what's the best way for people to get involved in this tournament, Mike? Go to geekcastradio.com, look for GCRN Wars episode 17, listen to the episode, then vote. And state your opinion. Try to get other people, try to convince us to vote in other ways. And feel free to uh, talk about this to your friends. You know, Put it on your own Facebook, tweet it out. Uh, try to rally, st- rally support for whoever you're wanting to vote for. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, Steve, when can people vote? Uh, it will be up on Wednesday, 10 a.m. All right, so get your votes in, spread the word, and we'll see what happens. And we will be back next week to discuss the winners of round two and the matchups for the quarterfinals. Thank you for listening to GCRN Wars. You can get a hold of us in the following ways. You can contact us on Facebook by searching GeekCast Radio Network. You can comment on this episode post with the poll. Please be sure to fill out the voting, and uh, if you'd like to leave an explanation, leave it in the comments below. You can get a hold of us on Twitter, at Geekcast Radio, hashtag GCRN Wars. That's G-C-R-N-W-A-R-Z. So until next time, tune in and check out GCRN Wars Tournament on episode 16, where we cover the other half of Round 1's fight. So until next time, unleash the geek in you.
score gets higher, they multiply. Napa guy knows more isn't always better. Unless we're talking about full-size vans. These beasts do more than get you from A to B. They have so much space a man can live in it. With shag carpeting, water bed, and a sweet lava lamp, these mobile abodes have all the comforts of home. With quality parts and plenty of Napa know-how, you can keep the original tiny house running longer, stronger. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. 